Hey there guys, Mark here from Soulfly Concepts and welcome back to the channel. So today we're looking at Airport Design Editor, or ADE for short. Now this video may be a bit on the stupidly long side, so to try and help you out I've split it into a few sections. Um, you'll see what I mean. So ADE itself is a very heavily used program inside the flight sim community. Um, because of that reason, it's got a lot of options and a lot of tools. Now I'm going to narrow things down as best I can. However, this is not going to be in one video. It's going to be over a course of them. I don't know how many just as yet, but I'm not going to put everything into one video because it's going to become too long. I'm going to start talking too fast, and I'm going to have comments galore saying, slow down, I don't understand, and I'm going to end up spending more time helping people than I am actually helping people. So, this is going to be over the course of a few videos. I do hope you understand why. Um, it's just too much to squeeze into one. I don't want to try. I'm not going to try. I'll put everything I can into one video and that will be released. I am using the Pro Key Edition for ADA. So you may notice that I have a few more options than you do if you have the free version. But keep in mind, be rest assured, that everything I'm about to show you can be done with the free version. You do not need to spend any money on this product, should you not wish to. Everything I'm going to show you can be done for free, using the standard free version. So let's make sure we're running the program as admin, um, so if any file paths that the program uses is, uh, uses is. So if any file paths that the program uses are in any way um, restricted, then the application can take full control of them if it needs to. When you first start ADE, if you have more than one flight sim installed, you'll be greeted with this. The sim selection box, or the sim selection dialog, whatever you want to call it. And inside here you'll have all your flight sims that ADE caters for. It's an ESP program, so you're not going to see things like X-Plane or whatnot in here yet. I don't know what the future holds for ADE, but we just open up the FSX version like that. If you only have one flight sim installed, then the application will open straight up into that flight sims edition of ADE. So in this case FSX, if I only have FSX installed, it will open up straight into the FSX edition of ADA. If this is the first time you have ever ran ADA, I strongly suggest running through the new user wizard. This will help you locate all the necessary files in your SDK and get your ADA ready to compile new scenery files. If for any reason, the new user wizard doesn't come up um, in a little dialog box that says do you want to run the new user wizard. Uh, you can access it through tools and click on new user wizard. Inside here, um, you'll be greeted with a couple of options first. If this is not your first time running ADE, and say you've got an older version, you can import settings from it. Or you can just click next and just go through the new user wizard as you were. At the top here we have the initials. This will be applied to the file name when you save BGLs and things like that. Um, for me it's SFC for Sawfly Concepts. For you it could be something completely different. It's going to be your choice entirely of what you put in that box. Some messages are displayed for a limited time. You can set the value in seconds here. I just have to add 2 seconds default because that for me is enough to read short messages. Uh, you might want to knock it up to 3 seconds, knock it down to 1 second, whatever you need to. Um, the autosave interval um, is defaulted at 5 minutes. You can change that to 6 minutes, 4 minutes, whatever you want to. Um, I just left it at 5 minutes because, yeah, it's, it's decent time. Last but not least on here, you'll have a little checkbox. Now this is in FSX slash D3D. In FS2004, you won't be greeted with this. But parking and apron path taxiway links do not display services that take on the surfaces of what's underlying. So it could be grass, it could be apron, um, anything like that. Due to a bug in FSX, it's possible for these links 
to display a surface. So, say if um, you've used a path link to come off of a concrete taxiway. Sometimes FSX will say, well, that's still a con concrete taxiway. So, we're just going to draw that surface. ADE can mask that and get rid of it. So just leave that box checked, because ADE does all the hard work for you. Um, you can handle it by yourself if you want to be very precise, but just leave it as it is. ADE can do anything you need to. On the next page we have our folders. First off we have our scenery.cfg. Now this is the scenery.cfg file for the FS... Um, the, the flight sim version in question. For this one, it's FSX. Inside C, Program Data, Microsoft, FSX. Now, that's usually where your scenery CFG would be. It can be in different places, but usually in there. Usually. Now, ADE can find things for you if you need it to. Um, it's pretty good at it. It doesn't really mess up too, too often. But sometimes, sometimes, it can get things wrong. Like, it would look into a specific folder and find um, that folder to be empty, and it will still populate this. So just check to make sure, if you click on Find, just double check to make sure everything is correct. So the next one down is our flight sim. Now this is just the path to our flight simulator.exe. For me, it's the Steam Edition, located in Program Files, Steam, Steam Apps, Common, FSX. And that's where I find my flights, um, FSX.exe. Um, SHP to VEC Compiler. Uh, this is an FSX slash PPD only thing. Um, this usually finds itself in the SDK files, uh, in the training SDK. Again, ADE can find things for you, but just double check to make sure things are right. And BGL comp, this allows you to compile things like BGLs. Um, quite important for flight sim, really. Um, again, found in your SDK folders. Now, if you don't have any SDK folders, you can um, acquire the SDK for FSX. Now, if you have any issues getting the SDK for FSX, if you have the Steam Edition, um, then you can just use the SDK that comes along with the Steam Edition. Or, you can um, download it from here. Microsoft Developer, on here is a link uh, for you to download the SDK for FSX. It's S FSX Service Pack 2 SDK, which is basically the same thing as the standard one, only it's a couple of differences. Um, if you've got the same edition, then this one will work just fine. If you've got um, a much earlier box version, say if you've got the standalone like I used to, um, then you're going to need the service pack, well you're not going to need the service pack at all, you're just going to be FSX SDK. Now for me that was shipped with uh, one of the discs that I had with FSX. Um, however, you can download it from the interweb these days. It's a bit easier to obtain now. On the next page we have our units. Now this is all user defined. If you don't like working in a specific unit, you can change it to uh, the other version. So say if we've got um, metric and imperial, um, if you'd like working in metric, you can change it from imperial to metric. Um, if you don't like working in metric, you can change it from metric to imperial. It's up to you. Um, however, the very top one, distances, that's measured in nautical miles, and that will always be measured in nautical miles. You cannot change that. It's miles or nothing. Below that we've got meters, 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 and decimal. You can change the meters to feet. And you can change decimal to DDM. When you're happy with that, just click next. And on the page here we have our project settings. Now this is all about where your project saved to. When you just hit control and S, and it will first time it will bring up the save as dialog and it will default to this particular folder you can change that if you like but eh, this is where all, all my projects get saved when they get compiled I can change where they compile to so you don't need to set these but eh, you can leave them as they are if you like 
And once you've done that, you can click finish and your ADE should be set up and ready to rumble. You can now compile new scenery files. So in the next video, we're going to be looking at the user interface. So we're going to be looking at file, edit, view, lock, unlock, list, blah, blah, blah. And we're going to look at all of these funky tools up at the top here. And here it says no project loaded. We're not going to look at that because there's no point. It just says no project loaded. That changes once you load a project. Shocker. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. My name is Mark from Soulfly Concepts. Like, comment, and subscribe, and hit that bell thing to stay updated. Bye bye. I'm really gotta fade out. Fade out. I need to fade out.